Good afternoon and welcome once again to the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2016. Up next we have an interesting talk from Professor Vladimir Matolin, the head of R&D at LeanCat from the Czech Republic. The topic will be advanced proton exchange membrane fuel cells, nanostructured thin film catalysts with low platinum content. Please join me in welcoming him on stage. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Vladimir Matolin. I am from uh, LinCat uh, uh, Consortium. This is a new consortium focusing to development of economical proton exchange membrane fuel cell uh, catalysts and also of development of uh, advanced uh, testing station for uh, fuel cells. Uh, the consortium uh, is, uh, or the goal of the consortium is to, to put on the market or if it, to ensure the transfer of technology uh, from university research uh, to applications. Uh, what we are doing is based uh, on uh, a knowledge driven development and uh, we are using what is uh, new relatively to standard techniques. Uh, we are working with thin film catalysts. Uh, usually catalysts are prepared by wet techniques, uh, by the synthesized uh, in uh, solutions. Uh, this is because uh, thin film technologies are generally considered as non-compatible with catalysis because in general thin films has a flat surface, non-porous. Uh, uh, however, if we are able to tune the porosity to use the deposition techniques with a special parameter ensuring the growth of layers with high porosity, uh, the, the same film is opening uh, new possibilities in uh, uh, formation and development or in preparation of catalysts because we can very, very precisely handle all parameters, the deposited amount, uh, uh, porosity and all conditions, we can mix the different compounds and create the uh, compound or the mixture solution on, um, I don't know, so uh, alloys and so on. Well, uh, the basic techniques which we are using is magnetron sputtering. Uh, probably it's uh, known, uh, however, so I will explain uh, in, uh, very shortly. In case of magnetron sputtering, we have the targets, you have the plasma. Plasma particles are bombarding targets, they have the sputtering of particles, and the particles are deposited on the substrate. Uh, the plasma can be created uh, in uh, non-reactive gas like argon, in that case the sputtering is non-reactive. But if we add a reactive gas in the working mixture, we can create new compounds like oxide, nitrines and so on. And in that case it's opening way to uh, formation of uh, new compounds. Uh, what uh, is uh, special, so how we can ensure the porosity, is that we are using different steps. Uh, GDL coating, nanomasking, selective substrate etching, porosity tuning and ultra uh, thin catalyst, uh, ultra thin film of catalyst deposition. Uh, you can see uh, schematically the results here. So the porosity is ensured by uh, etching of nano holes into the carbon substrate and the deposition of catalyst, in this case, the ceria and platinum inside. Uh, we are able, by changing the parameters, we are able to tune the porosity uh, from uh, this uh, a small pore structure until uh, very efficient etching which can create some kind of nano noodles which are uh, coated with uh, catalyst. Uh, you can see here uh, the steps. Uh, we can start or we are starting from uh, GDL as you can saw before in the previous talk. The GDL is coated with uh, nanoparticles, typically of carbon, uh, which are bonded uh, together uh, with PTF and ionomer. After that, so we are coating the nanoparticles with uh, carbon aceous uh, uh, material, 
and we are etching uh, the structure by forming this kind uh, cauliflower uh, structure with very high uh, porosity. And at the same time, we are depositing the catalyst. So the results can be seen here. If we have one nanoparticle of carbon, so we have the nano pores or nano holes inside the particle which is filled with uh, five macro micron uh, five nanometer uh, large particles of the catalyst and if we use this technique for uh, preparation of uh, anode catalyst it means which is on the hydrogen side of proton exchange membrane fuel cell oh, oops it's Uh, sorry, there is some... Okay. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, if we prepare this kind of anode, uh, we can obtain for very low loading, which is uh, far five or two to four uh, microgram of platinum per square centimeter of anode, uh, power density of 1.4 watt. Which means that if... Uh, we use this anode uh, together with uh, state-of-the-art cathode of uh, the fuel cell. We can divide the total loading by two because the platinum loading at the anode is almost negligible because uh, two micrograms is like nothing. Uh, we can test it, so uh, we perform uh, heavy-duty cycling. You can see that even after 6,000 loops, uh, uh, this, uh, by changing the open circuits and uh, one ampere uh, load, so you can see that the activity is uh, almost uh, stable. Well, uh, we can do, we can use the same technique for preparation of the cathode, uh, only by changing a little bit the parameter and compound. And, and uh, the results can be seen here because uh, we can prepare uh, the EMA, so the MEA, with uh, synfilm anode and synfilm cathode. All both are uh, nanostructured, nanoporous, and in that case the total loading is uh, 50 microgram of platinum per square centimeter of MEA. Uh, you can see that we can achieve uh, almost 0.5 Watt. This is probably a little bit lower than this, uh, relatively to the state-of-art uh, fuel cell. However, if we calculate the specific power, it means something which is related to the cost. We can see that we have 9 Watt per milligram of uh, platinum. Uh, well, what is important in our research is that we are using uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, analysis technique uh, like uh, spectroscopy, microscopy, uh, we are using uh, theory calculation and operando analysis, which means the analysis in uh, the condition which are simulating well uh, the real operation conditions. You can see in this cartoon example of uh, such uh, uh, research or the loop of the research. For example, if you have a catalyst which, is, which, which has some performance, uh, uh, we can do the model by preparing the same material in flat. Uh, as a flat layer, we can test it with scanning uh, tunneling microscopy. Combined is this chemical analysis by photoelectron spectroscopy. We can combine with chemical analysis, resonance spectroscopy at, micro at, at uh, synchrotron. What we can do is we are checking uh, the electronic structure and valence band structure, which is uh, connected uh, very closely uh, to the chemical properties, uh, photoelectron diffraction. We are using ab initio calculation. We are calculating the most effective uh, sites at the surface. We can do the model of particle, uh, compare it with uh, res results of uh, high resolution transmission electron microscopy, and close the loop because all these steps are giving us the feedback which permits us to improve the catalyst. Here you can see the list of techniques which we are using. Photoelectron spectroscopy at high pressure, photoelectron diffraction, valence band mapping. We have a beamline at synchrotron Trieste, a letter. Uh, we can do high resolution photoelectron spectroscopy. Uh, 
soft X-ray valence band stain nexafs. In electron microscopy, we are using TM uh, scanning electron microscope with focus ion beam. Uh, for scanning probe microscopy, we are using STM and uh, atomic force microscopy connected to electrochemical cell. This is also the operando study for the, uh, as well as Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy. Uh, we are a member of European Consortium, Central European Research Infrastructure Consortium, CERIC, where we have access to uh, small angle X-ray scattering at the synchrotron, X-ray absorption, spectroscopy and X-ray diffraction. Uh, now, uh, a little bit, uh, very, very shortly, uh, why or how we can achieve this very high activity and quality of the catalyst. We are doping, uh, we are using the platinum uh, together with cerium oxide on the anode side. And here you can see uh, how it works. In case of cerium oxide nanoparticles, so the platinum ions, uh, single platinum ions, are uh, anchored in uh, uh, square oxygen sites, uh, forming very, very stable, very stable sites. Uh, this is prevent the sintering uh, and uh, it keep platinum atomically dispersed. It means that uh, this explains why with very low loading of few nanometers, few microns, we can have a high activity because the platinum is atomically dispersed. This is new. Well, we are we need also testing. We are testing all electrochemical parameters because this is the electrocatalyst. Of course, the performance we are using, we are using electrochemical surface uh, uh, analysis. Uh, uh, we are checking the mass activity uh, by using electrochemical impedance spectroscopy and hydrogen crossover study and so on. And we are performing long-term durability tests because this is essential for application. For that, we built, uh, in the consortium, we built uh, the fuel cell testing laboratory equipped with 10 uh, testing stations. You can see that here. Uh, the testing station can work with different uh, gas, uh, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, air, and also additive gas for poisoning studies like carbon monoxide. And uh, so this is uh, very shortly uh, you can see the data sheet. Uh, this is the integrated potentiostat. There is a special software. What is special is everything is electronically controlled, which means that we can also use the remote control on operate the system by distance uh, using the internet. Uh, here you can see uh, some details. Uh, you can see that there is a, this is a really complex structure, but uh, the price is very competitive. We are proposing that uh, as a commercial product. And uh, because there is no time for detailed explanation, so if you are interested in some explanation concerning these stations, please come to the booth. D54 is just here. And uh, you can see the station because the station is exposed there. So you can see that. Well. Just uh, before uh, conclusion, a very short remark concerning the electrolyzers. Uh, we are using the same process for development of uh, catalyst uh, for electrolyzers. Here you can see the iridium coating of uh, this special uh, nanoporous substrate. Uh, you can see uh, the performance of electrolyzer from different loadings from 35 to 100 nanometer, which means that we are able to obtain the standard performance for something like 100 microgram of iridium per square centimeter. And we can go to the conclusion. First of all, we are using SILFIM technology. We can synthesize highly active electrocatalysts by using plasma-assisted deposition on nanoporous substrate. This is very important because the synfilms can work only with nanostructured substrate. 
if you can increase the loading, we have to increase the porosity. Otherwise, the surface would be blocked by a continuous layer. Uh, sorry. So we are preparing advanced substrate. Uh, we, are, we can produce uh, very high active anode or very cheap cathode for uh, application like uh, edu stacks and so on, where the high uh, power density is uh, not necessary if we are using advanced theory. Uh, acknowledgement, so uh, first of all, of course, uh, I acknowledge our partner in the LINCAT consortium and for funding, mainly the Yablotron company, also European Commission through the uh, EU ChipCut project, which I'm coordinating. The name is Design on Synfilm, Nanocatalyst for On-Chip Fuel Cell Technology. We are working with colleagues from Spain, from Italy, France, uh, Universal Erlangen, Germany, and Solvicor company. There is also contribution of the COST project, European Reducible Oxide Chemistry of Czech Science Foundation. Anyhow, we would be happy if you come to our booth and we are, uh, it will be a pleasure to give you more details about our research. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Matalin. Yes, your applause. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you have the opportunity to ask your questions. If anybody has a question, please raise your hand. I'll be the microphone right with you. Not at the moment, as far as I see, but of course, everybody could and should visit uh, Professor Matulin at D54, of course. Uh, just one, one simple question from my side, maybe, Professor Matulin. You, you were talking about PAM uh, fuel cells and, and the uh, low uh, platinum uh, uh, particles in there. Do you think you will come at one day to zero platinum, or is that impossible? Uh, you ask what I personally believe. Yes, what you personally uh, believe. Yeah. I, I believe that not in the near future. It's not, uh, but uh, that what means in the, in the longer future. I, 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 in the long future, <laughs> everything is possible. But, uh, yeah. but I think that the, the good way is uh, the very low loading, because if we reduce the, the platinum content considerably, we are almost at platinum free and this is possible it, that this goal can be achieved by increasing dispersion by fixing platinum atoms because otherwise the problem is that it is sintering this is the problem the durability and uh, the platinum atoms which are inside the particles are not active okay, yeah. and are you also working on the other side on iridium iridium uh, for iridium it's very very similar it's very similar okay. similar aspects okay same thing. Okay. Whoever wants to know, know a little bit more, D54 is the booth just over there. Thank you very much, Professor Matalin, for this wonderful it was a presentation. Pleasure. Thank you. Give him once again your applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going on with our presentations here in just one minute time. Just give us one minute and then we, you can hear a new type of electrolyzer, cost-efficient production of hydrogen with AEM electrolyzer. What that is, we'll explain J Jens Bischoff to you from Sales in Abata Europe GmbH. We're looking forward to that. In a minute time, we will be ready. <laughs>